In this video I'm going to solve every question from the UKMT Junior Maths Challenge from 2021. That's one of the main maths challenges in the UK, usually taken by students aged 11 to 13, but often taken by younger students as well. And if you're preparing for that challenge, then take a look at my free course, Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge. In that course, you can practice all of these questions as well as questions from other papers. And each question has a video hint and a full video solution. So you can have a go at the question, then watch the hint if you're stuck. That gives you really the best chance of getting the answer by yourself. Then you can see if it's right and then watch the video solution if you want to. It's a really great way to prepare for the junior maths challenge. Over at the courses website, I've got loads more courses to prepare for maths challenges and for school maths as well. So I really hope you will take a look over there. But if you'd like to watch the solutions here on YouTube instead, I'll get on with them now. I'll put timestamps below so you can jump to the questions you need, or if you'd like to work through the whole paper with me here, then we'll start at question one and you can pause the video at the start of each solution. So we're just gonna work this one out. Uh, we've got one, two, three, and I'm gonna add that to seven, eight, nine. To begin with, do this by whatever uh, method you want. Here, I'll just do an ordinary column addition. Three plus nine is 12, and then two plus eight plus one gives me 11, and then one plus seven, plus the one gives me nine, so I've got 912, and then 912 minus 456. Um, so I've got uh, 12 minus six is uh, is six, and then I'm gonna have to have a five here uh, and carry one from the nine, and I get 456. So do the subtraction however you want to, the answer is A, 456. Um, notice you could also just do this in a more approximate way. Um, you know, 123 plus 789 is about 900. And then if I take off about 450, I'll get about 450. There's really no other answers competing with it here. So you might be able to go for the answer A uh, more quickly there. So I think uh, when I looked at this question, my instinct was to say, how many 5p coins are there in a pound? Well. 5 times 20 is 100, um, so there's 20 uh, 5p coins in a pound, so in 20 pounds there would be 20 times 20, um, and in uh, 50 pounds, well, there would be, again, 50 2p coins in a pound, because 50 times 2 is 100, so in 50 pounds there would be 50 times 50 of them, so we can just add those together and get 400 plus 2,500, these calculations and now easy to do because two times two is four and then times 10 times 10 gives you 100 and the same 50 times 50 here. Uh, so that gives me 2,900 uh, and the answer is E. Um, alternatively, you could say, you know, 20 pounds is 2,000 P and uh, do 2,000, uh, you know, divided by five to get the 400 and you could do the same here, 50, um, you could say 50 pounds is 5,000 P and divide that by two P to get 2,500 and add them together. Either way, we get the same answer. So as I said in the hint, really just about the order of operations here. So applying uh, bid mass uh, or whatever similar um, words you use here, um, I'm gonna do the multiplications and the divisions first. So it's like I've got brackets around those. So the answer to this question will be one minus six plus four divided by five is four fifths. You could write that as 0 0.8 if you want to. But then for the addition and the subtraction, we just go left to right. Okay, addition does not come before subtraction. They have equal priority here. So this is gonna be minus five plus 0 0.8, and minus five plus 0 0.8 then gives us minus 4.2, and the answer is A. So we're just gonna check whether each of these are multiples of 11 by doing the division. So um, as I showed in the hint, 11's into 187. That goes once with remainder seven and then 11 into 77 goes seven times, so that one does work, and you can probably see the others pretty quickly here. You might not actually want to write them all out to save yourself a bit of time. 11 into 15 will go once with four left over. Uh, now this time I've got four, but a remainder two, because 11 times four is 44, so that one is not a multiple of 11. Um, I think when I first looked at this, I didn't write them all out to save a bit of time. I just looked at this and said, well, I only really care about whether I get a remainder at the end, so it goes into so I get 22 with three left over and then 33, that'll divide exactly, right? So that one is, again here, if I go into 49, it's 44 with five left over and I get 55, which is a multiple of 11. So that's gonna give me a multiple of 11 and 132, 11 into 13, leave a range of two. And I get 22, which is a multiple of 11. So that's that, you might just know that 12 times 11 is 132 as well. So four of these are multiples of 11, if you want to just do the divisions longhand like this. Um, interestingly, there is a test for divisibility by 11 um, that 
I don't think you really need for the junior math challenge. I think when when multiple, multiples of 11 come up, it's just as easy to do the division here. Um, but it's an alternating digits test. So what you do is you take you take one and then you subtract eight and add seven if I'm looking at 187. So I take each of the digit, digits and then do minus plus minus plus as I go through the number. Uh, and here I get zero. And if if the number you get here is a multiple of 11, then the original number is a multiple of 11 as well. Um, zero counts as a multiple of 11 here, so um, that is uh, a multiple of 11. But you don't really need that test here, is it? it's so easy just to do the divisions really. Question five, it says when I've walked 20% of the way to school, I've got 1,200 meters more to walk than when I've 20% of the walk remaining. So as I suggested in the hint here, I'm going to have a diagram just to help us see what's going on here, which has home on it, and it's got school on it, and there will be these two points here that I'll just draw roughly where I've got 20% of the way are there and where I've got 20% of the way left. Um, so if those two are 20% each, that's 40% in total. So it must mean that this bit in the middle here is 60%. Now, it says when I've walked 20% of the way to school, I've got 1,200 meters more remaining than when I have 20% of the walk remaining. So this distance here, it's saying, if I go along this red line from here to school is uh, 1,200 meters more than if I go from when I've got 20% of remain 20% remaining to school, right? So if I sort of cut off at that point here then and take this distance here, this must be the extra 1,200 meters. And so we know that 60% of the journey is equal to 1,200 meters. So we just need to scale this up to 100% now, different ways you can do it. Perhaps the easiest is just to divide it by three and say 20% would be 400 meters and then times it by five and get 100% is 2,000 meters. And then we see that the answer is E. Okay, so we've got to multiply two minus a half times three minus a third times four minus a quarter. Well, two minus a half um, that's one and a half, or in fact, I want to think of these all as top heavy fractions. So I might actually just write this out um, to make it a little clear as well. I hope two, I might think of as four over two, then minus one over two, three would be nine thirds minus one third, and four would be 16 over four minus one over four, because I want to leave them as top heavy fractions. This is a good way of thinking about it, right? So I've got four minus one is three over two, and I want to multiply that by uh, 8 over 3 and then multiply that by 15 over 4 and you could now do 3 times 8 times 15 and 2 times 3 times 4 get a big fraction and then simplify it down but you can save yourself a lot of time here if you spot the cancellation that's going to happen before you multiply right on the top here you've got a factor of 8 and there's a 2 and a 4 and 2 times 4 is 8 so they all cancel and you also got a 3 on the top and the bottom so they cancel out and so the answer here must just be 15 which is B Right, so a big copy of the diagram always helps here. Made a slightly larger version <clears throat> so I can put the uh, angles I'm working out in. Remember, we want to get PTS, so we want to get this combined, uh, sort of these three angles combined here. And we've got lots of isosceles triangles. We know that um, TP and TQ are equal, so TPQ here is isosceles. <clears throat> so that means that these two angles at the bottom are equal, uh, but the angles in a triangle are up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 36, that's 144, that's the total of these two angles. Divide 144 uh, by two and we get 72. So this must be 72 and this is 72. Then I've got angles on a straight line here. Uh, so 180 minus 72 is 108. And actually that also means that the other two angles in this triangle add up to uh, 72 as well. That's that nice case of the, the result that if you have a triangle with a straight line, you know these two angles always add up to the same as this one because you know uh, angles in a straight line add up to 180 and also angles in a triangle do as well. Talk a lot more about all these things in the full course uh, Go for Gold in Maths Challenges. Now um, the uh, so these two add up to 72, divide 72 by 2 and I get 36 so this angle must also be 36 and this one is 36. Now I can do the same, play the same game again 180 minus 36 will give me this angle because of the straight line here uh, so that's 144, and then 180 minus 44 gives me the 36 again. So these two add up to give 36, so they must both be 18. Again, because this is isosceles, those two angles are equal. So the total angle that we're looking for here is 36 plus 36 plus 18. So that's 72 plus 18, 
which is 90. So in fact, this angle here is a right angle and the answer is C. In question eight here, we've just got to make sure we do everything in the right order. So I start with the inside bracket, four minus five will give me minus one. Then I do three minus minus one to give me plus four. Then I do two minus what I've got here, which is so two minus four is minus two. And then one minus minus two gives me a final answer here of three. And the answer is E. So I've just got to go from the inside out and be very careful with the uh, negative numbers. If you want me to do that, slightly more slowly, um, you could uh, replace them one at a time and, and, and rewrite the whole thing, right? So I could replace that four minus five here uh, with, with minus one, say, and then three minus minus one uh, gives four. I'm just doing exactly the same thing as I did a second ago here. We're gradually just getting rid of the brackets, right? And then we do two minus four gives us minus two. Um, and now I've gone this far, I may as well finish. And then we get just left with one minus minus two, which gives us that same answer of three. Okay, so did the same thing there twice in very similar ways. Hopefully that's clear and you got the answer three. Okay, in this cross number, we've got these four clues. Three of the clues are exactly the same, it just says they're square numbers, right? So this is a square number, this is a square number, um, and this is a square number. Um, but three across is an odd square number. So that's where we're really going to focus our attention. Now, the two digit square numbers, what are they? Well, uh, three squared is only nine. So the first one is gonna be 16, which is four squared. 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and then we'll be into three digit squares. So this is all we've got to work with. And the only ones of these that are odd are 25, 49, and 81. So they're the only possible choices that we could put here for three across. Now if you think about 25, uh, well, that would mean that one down would have to be a square number as well, would have to end in a two, but none of these square numbers end in a two, so this can't be 25. Similarly, if I tried to put 81 in here, I'd need a square number here that ended in an eight, but none of these numbers end in an eight, so it can't be 81. Therefore, it must be 49, um, and you can check that, well, yeah, do we get a square number that ends in a four? Yet yeah, we could use 64, and so we could have 64, um, 64, 49, 49, and that would work, and that means that the missing digit X must be E9. Okay, so again, I've just got a bigger copy of the picture here. Um, it says uh, we've got a rhombus formed by joining each vertex of a square to the midpoint of a side of the square. Basically, everything is just as in this picture. And the way I'm going to do this problem is just to uh, put a few extra lines uh, on here. Let me see if I can do that a bit more uh, accurately there. So I'm going to put a line through here, a line through here, uh, a line down here, and a line down here. And now you can see, I think, that all of the triangles that I formed have exactly the same uh, area, you know, they're like halves of rectangles here that are all the same size. So I can just count how many are shaded. There's one, two, three, four uh, out of a total. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the top. So another eight here, so out of 16. So the fraction shaded must be four out of 16, which is one quarter. And so the answer here is C, one quarter. So in the hint, I talked a bit about what a prism is, right? It's like, a, I've got to take a shape uh, on one end here and extend it in three dimensions and um, and we get a shape something like this. So look, look at the hint if you're not sure what a prism is. Um, so like in this one, I've got my two ends that are faces and then I get another four faces like the top, the, the two sides and the bottom here. So this would give me six faces. Now if I want 10 faces, I'm stuck with the two ends and I've just got to make sure then that whatever is in the middle accounts for the extra eight faces. So if I want eight more, I'm going to have to start with an eight-sided shape uh, on the end of my prism. So it's going to have to be an octagon uh, on the end here. And then if I extend uh, that as a prism to another octagon on the other, other side, I'm not sure how well I'm going to draw this. Let's give it, give it my best shot here. Um, okay, then I will have ten faces, right? I'll have a face on this on the back here, a face on the front, and I'll have the eight that go uh, around here. Um, so that is uh, 10 faces. So how many edges does it have? Well, the octagon has uh, eight sides and they become edges of this three-dimensional shape. So there's going to be eight edges on this octagon. There's also going to be eight on the one on the back. And then there are eight edges that go from each of the connecting sides as well, from each of the eight vertices uh, on this side to this side. So there's another eight there. So the answer to this question is that the uh, number of edges is going to be eight plus eight plus eight which is 24, and so the answer is C. 
Okay, I'm going to do this question in two ways. Um, the most obvious way to do it, I think, is to, as I said in the hint, turn these uh, bits of information into uh, minutes, right? So Jasleen, um, who answers uh, four questions every 30 seconds, we could also say answers uh, eight questions uh, every minute, right? So if Jasleen takes exactly one hour to do this, that's 60 minutes times eight questions. Six times eight is 48, times 10 is 480. So there must be 480 questions uh, in this paper. Now, what about uh, Ella then? Well, Ella does five questions every 40 seconds. And so if I multiply that up by three, that's 15 questions uh, every two minutes. And that's probably the easiest way to do this. Keep the number of minutes a nice whole number. So how many lots of 15 questions are there? Well, I'll do 480 divided by 15. 48 divided by 15 is 3, with 3 left over, 30 divided by 15 is 2, so that's 32. So Ella needs 32 lots of 2 minutes uh, to do these questions. 32 times 2 is 64 minutes, and 64 minutes is 4 more minutes than an hour, and so the answer here is D. Um, a fast way of doing this, if you want a really uh, nice uh, mathematical method, is actually to look at how long they um, each take uh, well, how many questions they each do in two minutes. So you see, you could also say that Jasleen takes uh, 16, the 16 questions uh, in two minutes, right? Whereas uh, Ella does only 15 questions in two minutes. So Jasleen's sort of speed, uh, if you like, is 16 fifteenths of the speed of Ella, right? So um, so Ella's speed is 15 sixteenths of the speed of of Jasleen. So you could here, if you really think about this carefully, just say we just need to do 16 times uh, 16 fifteenths to work out the time uh, that Ella takes. 16, 60 over 15 is 4, so that's 4 times 16, which is 64. That method requires a bit more of a deeper understanding of sort of um, speed and time and things, um, but it's a very efficient method if you can spot it. I think most people would do it the first way, and that would be a great answer for the Junior Math Challenge. So I hope I didn't give too much away in the hint here. Um, we've got five line segments uh, coinciding at this point as shown. I want to know what the sum of the angles is. Now, as I mentioned in the hint, um, you know, if we just wanted to know, if we included all of these angles as well, these red ones, um, then together with the red ones, we would just have uh, five triangles. We'd have all the interior angles of the triangle. So it would be five times 180 is uh, 900. Now. So to start with, we know that 900 is not the answer, it's less than that. Uh, and so if you were going to guess here, you might start guessing one of the ones that are close to 900. But we can work this out exactly, of course, as well. I also mentioned maybe think about opposite angles, right? So if you look at this red one here, then opposite it, um, I'm going to put this green angle. But they are equal. Right? Opposite angles are equal because we've got these two lines meeting at a point here. Um, similarly, opposite this red angle here, there's, a, there's one here. And opposite each of the red angles, there's a green angle, and they're all equal. So the total of all the red angles and all the green angles, right, gives us a full circle, right? So all those green angles plus all of those red angles is equal to a circle. And we know that a circle is 360 degrees all the way around at the center here if I had all of those angles. So if they're equal, uh, they must both be 180, 360 divided by 2. So the sum of the red angles is exactly 180. So to get the answer here, we need 900 minus 180, and that is 720 degrees. And so the answer is B. Okay, so as we said in the hint, the uh, only numbers we're going to consider here are multiples of 9, because when we divide them by 9, we need to get uh, uh, an integer. And if it's not a multiple of 9, I won't, I won't end up with an integer here, obviously. Um, and we're only going to consider quite large numbers, right? If I do 900 divided by 9, I get 100. So if I start with anything lower than 900, um, I am not. I'm going to get a two-digit number here. And when I subtract nine, it's going to be even smaller. So it'll still be two digits, right? And in fact, that's the problem here. Even if I start with 900 here, by the time I subtract nine, I'm down to 91. So I actually need this final this number here. Once I've divided it by by nine, to be at least 109, right? If it was only 108, when I subtract nine, I'll be down to a two-digit answer again. So it's got to be that when I divide it by 9, I get at least 109. So my starting point has got to be 109 times 9. Okay, and that gives you 
981 here. So 981 is the smallest number that works here. Uh, and we're only considering multiples of 9. So the next one that would work would be 990, which is 9 more. And then 999 would also work um, if you divide uh, you know, this one by 9, you get 109, this one you get 110, this one 111. When you subtract 9, you get 100, 101, and 102. And they are the only numbers that can work, so the answer here is A3. Right, so we start with this big pile of 2p coins, and we know we get rid of half of them, so there must be an even number of, of 2p coins, right? And what we do is we get rid of all of the 2p coins in one pile, and we replace them with 10p coins, right? So it's natural to think, ah, oh, right, I've got a 2p and a 10p together, I've got another 2p and a 10p, another 2p and a 10p, and I've got another 2p and a 10p. And I really just want to know how many groups there are here. Right, well, each group is 12p, and she's got £4.20, which is 420p. So if I can do 420 divided by 12, 12 times 3 is, uh, is 36, 6 left over, 12 times 5 is 60, there must be 35 groups of 12p here, right? 12 times 35 is 420. So initially, she didn't have 35 groups of 12p, she must she had 35 uh, groups of a 2p and a 2p. So 35 groups of 4p, and then 35 times 4 is 140. Um, work that out however you want. 2 times 2 times 2 to get 7, to get 35 times 2 is 70, times 2 is 140, or have you want to work it out? 140p is £1.40, and so the answer here is D. Okay, so this cube has edge length 10 centimetres, and the first thing I want to do is to say, let's just think very carefully about how many uh, points there are on each edge, right? So if I start at the end here, there's going to be a point here and a point here at the vertices, and I'm going to use a different colour for the ones in the middle. If it's 10 centimetres long, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there we go, that will be 10 centimetres long. But how many dots are there here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right, so that's the first thing you could easily get wrong here. Because um, of the endpoints, there's 11 vertices. Now, if you imagine what happens at the corner uh, of the cube here, um, the thing we've really got to worry about is the fact that when I count these vertices, right, this, this is going to be included on this line, but it's also going to be included um, on the ones going in this direction and the ones going in this direction. So uh, two things we could do, we could either count them all up and then sort of subtract some of the vertices. Uh, by the way, this picture is meant to be like this corner here, right? So going in the three different directions. Um, or it might be easier just to count the red ones and the black ones separately here, right? So on each edge, there are nine vert there are nine dots that are not at the vertices. Now, how many edges are there on the cube, right? There's four around the front here, um, four around the back, and then there's these four here. So there's going to be 12 lots of nine um, dots on those edges, not including the vertices. Uh, and 12 times nine is 108. And then I've just got to add on the black dots, the vertices, the corners here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those in total. So I'm going to add eight and get a total of 116, and the answer is B, 116. Right. Alternatively, you could um, do 11 times uh, 12 is 132, right? and say, ah, I've got 12 edges, each of them has 11 uh, dots on it. Uh, now you've just got to think carefully about how many you need to take off of that. Um, because the uh, each vertex here uh, will be on three edges, you will have counted all of those three times. You only want to count them once. So you're going to need to take off two lots of each of those eight vertices. So you're going to need to take off 16, and that will take us down to 116. Either way there could get you the answer. Um, so as long as you've got the answer here, no working required on the Junior Maths Challenge. So full marks if you've got B116. Okay, so take a look at the hint if you're not sure what this question even means. The task is to write uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. as the sum of uh, some number of square numbers. So 13 has already been done with us, done for us um, in the question here. 13 is 2 squared plus 3 squared. 
which is 4 plus 9. And again, remember the only square numbers we're going to use here are 1, 4 and 9. And the fact we're allowed to use 0 means that when we try to write this as the sum of three square numbers, we can also do it in less, right? 4 plus 9 plus 0 gives us three square numbers. So I'm just going to go down the list and see what I can do. Right, well, 1 is just 1, so that's fine. If you want, you can add two zeros, but I'm not going to keep adding the zeros here. Right, 2 is 1 plus 1. 3 is 1 plus 1 plus 1. Well, 4 is just 4, that's easy. Uh, 5 is 4 plus 1. 6 would be 4 plus 1 plus 1. Now, 7, I get stuck um, because... I'd need to do 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, but that's 4, and so I can't do that. And my only other option would be to use 4 twice, and that would get me to 8. So uh, that's not going to do it. So actually 7 is not possible. Uh, 8 is 4 plus 4. 9 is just 9. 10 is 9 plus 1. 11 is 9 plus 1 plus 1. Um, 12 we can do is 4 plus 4 plus 4. 13 we've got already here is 4 plus 9. Uh, 14 we can then do as 4 plus 9 plus 1 and 15 we actually get stuck on um, because if I do 9 well I can't do plus 9 that goes too far 9 plus 4 gives me 13 but I can only add a 1 on 4 takes me too far and I can't do it with 3 4s so that only takes me to 12 so it's impossible to do 15 so we can do all of them apart from 7 and 15 so out of the 15 we can do 13 and the answer is C. So take a look at the hint if you're not sure like what this question means. I've explained it quite carefully there. Um, so we've got to take these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and make all the sums 15, the rows and the columns. Um, and there's a lot less choice for getting two numbers to add together to give 15 than there is for three numbers to add together to give 15, right? For two numbers adding together to, to give 15, the only options are actually... 7 plus 8 and 6 plus 9. If I use anything smaller, 5, I'd need a 10, right? So these numbers have to be uh, either, you know, 7 and 8 and 6 and 9 in, in some combination. But you notice immediately that actually what I've written here can't work because 7 plus 9 is 16. That's already bigger than 15. So, uh, so that's not going to, there's no way I can make that row add up to 15. In fact, if I put a 9 here, Right, I've got to have either 7 or 8. I have to have either 7 or 8 here. This is also too big. So 9 can't be uh, in the uh, central uh, row here. So I'm going to have to put the 9 either here or with the 6 here, or I suppose I could put the 6 and the 9 here, but they're identical. Right? It doesn't matter which way around we do it. So actually, let's, let's just leave it here. Um, and now I can try. Can I do this with 7 and 8? Uh, well, with 7 and 8 here, um, 6 plus 7 is 13, so I'd have to put a 2 in the middle, right? And so what I've used here is I've used the 6, 7, the 8, and the 9, and the 2, and I've got 1, 3, 4, and 5 left. So I need to make 7 at the top here with the 8, so I could use 3 and 4, and I've got 1 and 5 left here, right? So there's at least, and that gives me 15. So there's at least one way of doing it. The answer is not 0. And I didn't have, uh, you know, there was no other, okay, although I could, like, change the, like, the 3 and the 4 to be 4 and 3 or something, there's no other way uh, of doing this than putting the 2 as the start here, right? Okay, so uh, now, but what about if I do it the other way around? So if I do 8 and 7, can I do this? Well, I'd get a 1 in the middle now. And so I've this time I've used up 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1. With the 7, I need another 8 to make 15. Um, uh, so um, we could do that with the 3 and the 5. And for the 9, I need another 6, so I could do that with the 2 and the 4, so that also works. So this way I get a 1 in the middle. And again, once the 6 and the 8 are there, that must be a 1. So there are only two ways to do this. Um, we either end up with the 2 in the middle or the 1 in the middle, and we have verified that there are ways for both of those to work here. So the answer here is C2. So in the solution here, I think I might have given a little bit more away than I should have done in a hint. But So let's pick it up from where we were in the hint. Right, We had um, 2n girl studying French and N studying German, that gave us three N girls in total. We know it must be a multiple um, of uh, three because it was exactly one third of the girls. Now, if you think about the boys now, well, it says the same number of boys studied German um, as uh, there were girls studying German. So that's also N. Um, and twice as many boys as girls study French. So there must be four N boys studying French. 
So if I put this all together, the total number of people in the class must be 2n plus 4n plus n plus n, that's 8n. And what we see in particular is that that means that the number of students in the class must be a multiple of 8. And there's only one option here out of these numbers that's a multiple of 8, and that's 32. So that would correspond to uh, n being 4 here, and we would have 4 and 8, 16 and 4. You might be able to get that by just playing around with some numbers as well and hitting on that possibility, um, but that's perhaps a bit hard to do. Um, so anyway, the answer here is D32. Okay, so in the hint here, one of the things that I suggested was that you try, rather than making the whole shape out of eight of these, you know, if you could make somehow, uh, you know, the four by four by one, or the two by two by two out of a smaller number of them, then that would show you could make the whole shape because you could then, you know, like piece together four of these to make the whole shape, right? One here, one here, one here, one here, or two of the other types. Right, so um, in fact, you can do it uh, with all of them, and I'm going to use the um, official solutions here just for this question because they've got such nice pictures of them um, that I can't really do that justice very easily. Um, so you can actually use these. So when I, when I thought about this before I looked at the solutions, I, I you know it, it was one thing I'd say is that these two are quite different from these two, right? And that the top two are sort of somehow flat pieces; they don't go in both directions. So these two um, are good candidates to try and make this four by four by one shape. And you can see you can uh, do both of them here, right? You can put the T's together um, to, to to make the shape there. Or as it says here with this one, you can make, um, you can actually make the two by four like that. Or I think I would have drawn, uh, you can also just draw, draw them on here as well and make a, you can make the bottom half of it. So you can also um, make the top half of it here. And so you can definitely make those two. And um, the final two are a bit harder to visualize, perhaps, because you've really got to think in three dimensions here. Um, but certainly when you look at this one, you know, you can see you've got a bottom two and a top two. And if you were to just rotate that by 180 degrees, um, you the, the bottom two would be on the other side and the top two would be on the other side. So when you put those together, you would get a two by two by two cube. And if you make four of those, then you can make the full shape. And the same here. Perhaps this one's a bit easier to see that when you put those two together, you get a small cube, and so you can put those together. Anyway, uh, the answer here then is that you can do it with any of the shapes, and the answer is uh, E4. Okay, so we're going to pick up from what I'd written in the hint here, which was just to have a table here saying, well, um, if there are a fish, they have a head and a tail, dogs have a head and a tail and four legs, and children have a head and uh, two legs. So if we let the number of fish be F, the number of dogs be D, and the number of children be C, and we say there are 40 legs in total, well, that would mean that 4d plus 2c equals 40, or dividing it by 2, we get 2d plus c equals 20. Um, so that's one piece of information, and we're going to use that in a second. But I first um, want to write down this other statement, there are twice as many heads as tails. So how many, how many heads are there? Well, um, number of fish plus number of dogs plus number of children, and there are twice as many heads as tails, so that's going to be two times the number of tails, which is just fish plus dogs. Okay, so I've got number of fish plus number of dogs plus children is two fish, uh, two times fish plus two times dogs. And if you subtract an F and a D from each side here, we'll just get C equals uh, F plus D. So the number of children is the number of fish plus the number of dogs. Okay, so that's going to be useful. And we also know there have got to be more dogs than fish. So let's now just think about the possibilities for d, c, and f. So if you uh, take this equation, 2d plus c equals 20, um, now there's not enough information in this question to do it just purely algebraically. We need another piece of information, which is that they have to be whole numbers. Right? If we didn't know that it had to be a whole number of fish, you couldn't solve this question. right? So, um, so what could we do? Well, if d was 0, 2 times 0 plus 20, would give us 20, right? If d was 1, 2 times d would be 2, I'd have to add 18 to get to 20. So I can actually just say, well, look, there's only, right, there's not actually that many options here. There's only 10 possible choices. Once I get to 2 times 10, that means there's no children, and we certainly can't have negative dogs or children. So you can just fill in here pretty quickly um, that 
and you, once you spot the pattern that this is going up in one, this is ones, and this is going down in down in twos as well, you can say these are all the possibilities, right? Now this last statement about the uh, twice as many heads as tails says that children equals fish plus dogs, right? So I could rearrange that to say ah fish is just children minus dogs. So how many uh, fish would there be in each case? Well, so it would just be C minus D. 20 minus 0 is 20. 18 minus 1 is 17. 16 minus 2 um, is 14. 14 minus 3 is 11. And this is going down uh, in threes, you can see. And we get 8, 5, 2. Actually, down here, I'm going to get negative numbers, minus 1, etc. So actually, I can, I can uh, exclude all of these already. So these are all possible, possible combinations here, where there are 40 legs in total, and there are twice as many heads as tails. So all we've got to look now is how many of these have more dogs than fish? Well, in the first one, no dogs, 20 fish. Uh, one dog, 17 fish. So there's, all, there's more fish in all of these, until I get down to this last one here. This is the only one where the number of dogs is higher than the number of fish. Here it's five all. Um, so it must be that this is the combination. And there are six dogs, uh, eight children, and two fish. And so the answer is B, two. So in question 22, we've got these four congruent rectangles, each of perimeter 20, surrounding a square 44 centimeters squared. Now, as I said in the hint, I'm going to label those uh, X uh, and Y, the sides of these rectangles. So actually, that means this is X as well. This is Y, X and Y, X and Y all the way around. Um, but crucially, it means I can write something down uh, about the perimeter uh, of these uh, rectangles uh, here, right? So in, in each one of these uh, rectangles, I've got uh, y, y, x, and x. So the perimeter is 2 times x plus 2 times y. So that's 20. And that means that x plus y equals 10. So it's a slightly sneaky question here, because I think a lot of people's instincts will be to look at this inside square and to say, ah, this is like x minus y, and then to try and do some work with that. But because 44 is not a square number, I mean, it's not very nice. It just 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 doesn't. It's much easier here to instead look at the big square because we know that x plus y is ten. What we know is that this uh, is a ten by ten square. So its area, um, the area of the big square there, is one hundred ten by ten. So the four rectangles uh, together must have area one hundred minus forty four which is 56, and so one of them is going to be 56 divided by 4. 56 divided by 4 is 14 centimetres squared, and so the answer is A. So in question 23, we've got these four positive integers that multiply together. Well, when I do 9 minus them, they multiply together to give 9, but I could just, as e could just equally say 9 minus P, 9 minus Q, 9 minus R, and 9 minus S are four integers that multiply to give 9. And they've got to be different positive integers. And that's why we can uh, work this out. Because if you think about how you can write 9, well, the fact the prime factorization of 9 is just 3 squared. It doesn't actually have many factors 9. The only factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. So if I, get, if I want different numbers to multiply together to give 9, I'm going to have to make some of them negative. So I can only do it as 3 times 3. Um, but uh, what if I made it 3 times minus 3? Okay, well, I've got 9. I'm still looking for two more. Well, I've got minus 9, sorry. But I'm still looking for two more factors. So I can times by 1, and then I can times by minus 1. And now you see I've got the two minuses in there, so it does become plus 9 again. And I've got four different factors. So I can't do anything else here. There's no other possibilities. These sorts of questions have come up a few times in Math Challenges. And um, if you... Uh, remember that you can use 1 as a factor uh, in these questions, it really helps. So we must have that 9 minus p, 9 minus q, 9 minus r, 9 minus s are in some order 3, minus 3, 1, and minus 1. So that means here p must be 6, q must be 12 to get this to be minus 3, uh, r can be 8, and s can be 10. Doesn't matter which order they're in, obviously, we're going to get all four of those numbers. And so we want the value of p plus q plus r plus s, so that's 6, plus 12, plus 8, plus 10, so that's 20, 36. And the answer is e, 36. Right, so in question 24, um, again, right, as I said in the hint, we've got pq equals pr equals qs. So we've got these two isosceles 
uh, triangles that we can see one here uh, and one here and um, I've also got this right angle here on a straight line so that's a right angle and that's a right angle so this whole angle around here is 270 degrees now what I notice about this question is that the whole shape is a pentagon if I go around one two three four five like this and the sum of the interior angles okay as we um, again said in the hint is 180 times n minus 2 but here n is 5 for a pentagon so it's 180 times 3 which is 540 right but now the angles that I want are PRQ and uh, PSQ added together so I just want to add this one um, to this one here but we've got all these isosceles triangles so if I call this one X then uh, this angle here is also X uh, because of isosceles triangles right if this angle here is Y because of this isosceles triangle this angle is also Y so you see the sum of the interior angles here is I've got two lots of X and I've got two lots of Y and I've got this 270 degrees in the middle so when I add all those together I get 540 so that means that 2x plus 2y is 540 minus 270 which is 270 divide everything by 2 and we get x plus y is equal to 135 degrees and x plus y here is exactly what we're looking for okay add these two together um, we get x plus y so the answer is d 135 degrees okay question 25 super hard as always got four different integers when we add the pairs of numbers in turn we get totals 23 26 29 32 and 35 and one of the totals is repeated but they don't tell us which one it is right so it's saying like imagine the numbers were like 2 5 10 and 12 or something the pairs of numbers would be 2 plus 5 is 7 2 plus 10 is 12 etc 2 plus 12 is 14 if you do all of the pairs there are six pairs uh, possible in total here right you could match 1 2 3 4 5 or 6 um, it's telling us all the totals. These aren't the numbers for this question, right? Um, so what's the largest of the four integers? Well, so it does say they're different integers, so let's call them a, b, c, and d, and if they're different, that means uh, that one must be the smallest, one's next, one's next, and then one's the largest. So let's put them in order. Let's say it's a, b, c, and d. Now if you think about the pairs, right, you have a plus b is a possibility, a plus c and a plus d, these would be in increasing order, right? Because they've all got a in them. And then d is bigger than c is bigger than b, right? So I'm writing a list here where these are in increasing order. Also, if I take d plus a and I replace the a with a b, that must be bigger. b plus d must be bigger than a plus d. And also c plus d must be bigger than b plus d, okay? Now, there's only one pair that I haven't included in these five. And that's the pair that has that's B plus C. Now, so which of these could be repeated? Well, you know, B plus C can't be the same as B plus A because they've both got B in them. Can't be the same as C plus A because they've both got C in them, etc. So actually, the only one that doesn't have B or C in it is this one. And it must be that then that A plus D is equal to B plus C. And given that these are in order, right, this must be 23, 26, 29, 32, and 35 must be these in order. So we've got a lot of information worked out here now. Um, so what can I tell here? Well, I could, um, let's look at these first two. There's different ways of proceeding from here. Um, if I look at these first two, if you uh, say, well, A plus B is 23 and A plus C is 26, well, the only difference between these is that we've got C instead of B, and I end up with three more when I have C compared to B. So it must be, that um, c is three more than b so c must be uh, b plus three okay um but we also uh, again i could write that if you like as c minus b equals three but we also know that b plus c is 29 okay b plus c is 29. so if i combine these two bits of information and sort of add them together almost like simultaneous equations we've got here um, if you add those together i get c plus c and b plus minus b so the b and the minus b cancel out. So we'd get 2 times c is equal to 3 plus 29. So 2c is 32. And that gives me that c must be 16. Right? Now once I know that c is 16, I know c is b plus 3. So then I know that b must be 13. Um, I also know I only want the largest of the integers, so I guess I could just get it now. 35 is c plus d. 
So D is going to be 35 minus 16, which is 19. Uh, for completeness, why don't we get A as well? A plus B is 23. Um, so 23 minus 13 is 10. And then we've got all four of the numbers here. We only needed D, so you could stop as soon as you got that. Um, and the answer is B, 19. So a very hard question and uh, well done if you got that. So after I made the previous video about the solutions to this uh, Junior Maths Challenge 2021 paper, I did realize that there's probably a slightly easier way of going about question 25 than the way that's in the official mark scheme and the way that I presented in my previous video. So we're just gonna talk about that here. And it uses one of these ideas from the math challenges in particular that is super useful to bear in mind, which is that you have the answer in front of you. The answer is one of these five options. And so sometimes like a trial and error method, an elimination method can be a lot better than the sort of official mathematical answer here. And that's exactly true here. So let's just remember this question. It says, I choose four different integers. When I add all the pairs of these numbers in turn, the totals that I obtain are 23, 26, 29, 32, and 35. One of those totals is repeated. And what's the largest of the four integers? Okay, so, um, you know, so the, the, the four numbers are A, B, C, and D, and the totals that we're looking at are like A plus B, A plus C, A plus D, etc. right? So let's just go through in turn. Imagine the answer was 18, right? The largest number is 18 to get a total of 35 being the biggest pair, and the next one is going to have to be 17. 17 plus 18 is 35, right? Now, um, I'm going to have to now make 29 as one of the pairs as well. So it could, it could be 18 plus 11, right? But that would give me 29. But uh, 11 plus 17 would have to be one of the pairs. That would be 28. And that's not one of the numbers we're looking for, so it can't be 11 actually. So alternatively, to get the 29, I could do 17 plus 12, um, but now 12 plus 18 is not uh, is not one of the pairs. Um, so again, uh, that uh, isn't uh, isn't going to work here. Okay, I mean we could, uh, depending on how how confident you are of how far through these you need to check, you might think, oh, maybe 18 could go with 8 to get the 26, and that doesn't work as well or something. But I think I can stop here and say the answer's not going to be uh, 18 because the larger totals are going to have to combine from the larger numbers. Okay, so I'm not going to do this totally rigorously. I'm not, you know, you might say, oh, maybe you need to check a bit more than I have done. Um, but this sort of style of solving the problem is a maths challenge technique where we're trying to get there in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so let's now check 19, right? And if I, if I do this, I say, okay, well, if 19 is the biggest, the next biggest is gonna have to be 16 um, because 19 plus 16 is 35. So to get the 32 here, um, well, I can't have 16 twice, but I could do 19 plus 13 and 19 plus 13 gives 32. Okay, um, and this time 13 and 16 do give the 29. Um, so now I can try and get the 26 and I could say, ah, oh, I could do 19 plus 7, but 7 plus 13 then isn't one in the totals. I could do uh, 16 plus 10 uh, and then, ah, 10 plus 13 gives 23. Um, and I realize I've actually found the answer here, right? I've got all the totals, 10 plus 13 is 23, 10 plus 16 is 26, 10 plus 19 is 29, 13 plus 16 is 29, and that's the one that's repeated. Um, 13 plus 19 is 32, and 16 plus 19 is 35. So, okay, I've been a bit lucky that, you know, the correct answer was one of the earlier ones, but even if it wasn't, I could be going through and eliminating the other options here, right? So for 20, for, so if 20 was the biggest option, if C was the right answer and 20 was the biggest, it would have to be 20 and 15 to get 35. Um, but now to get the 32, I'm gonna have to include either a 12, which doesn't work because 12 plus 15 isn't, isn't one of the numbers, uh, or I'm going to uh, have to do 15 plus 17, uh, and then I'd have a 20 plus 17 and that's not in there, right? So um, so we can keep doing it for the others, right? 21, if 21 is the answer, 21 plus 14 would give me 35. Um, but now to get the to get the 32, I'm going to have to include, well, I can't do 14 plus 18 to get 32 because 18 plus 21 would be too big. Um, so I'm gonna have to do 21 plus 11, but then 11 plus 14 isn't in there. 
And finally for 22, I could say our 22 plus 13 would give 35. And again, for the same reason, it's going to have to, to get the 32, it's going to have to go with the 22. So that's 10. Ah, this time 10 plus 13 is in there. Um, so this is looking uh, slightly uh, more promising. I've got the 32 and I've got the 20. Uh, three here now to get the 29 I could either do 22 and 7 but then like 10, 10 plus 7 isn't in there um, or I could do 13 plus 16 um, but now 16 plus 22 isn't in there or I could do um, 10 plus 19 uh, but again 19 plus 22 isn't in there so you know you can actually eliminate all of the other options pretty quickly compared to the amount of like uh, rigor that was required to do the other one and certainly for the math challenge you know if you're just trying to solve this problem at the point where you found the four numbers that work you don't have to think about it anymore right um yes it's nice to do more convincing rigorous math and to think about it after the challenge but the point in these challenges is you get the answers and you also find quick and efficient methods that are sort of helping you so, sort of hone in and problem solve in the best possible way so anyway have a look at the other solution as well i mean it's a perfectly good one and it's it's uh, you know perhaps you could find that in the time as well but i think most students that would have got this right in the challenge would have done something like i've done in this video rather than the way i solved it before so i just wanted to show you that here